Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. Today we are reviewing the Zotac B150 mining motherboard. Now, as you may recall, we actually did an unboxing on this a few videos back and we gave you some basic information in there on this motherboard. Now, remember, just a reminder, this is while supplies last and it's at a really, really great price point. But we are gonna test it today and see, is it even worth it? Today we'll be reviewing the Zotac B150 mining motherboard. Now this board was sent to us by Zotac for review and we did unbox this board on a previous video if you want to check that out. Now for the testing we'll be using a Celeron G3900, risers from nerdgears.com, an EVGA 1200 watt P2 power supply, ballistics 8 gigabyte 2400 megahertz DDR4 memory, and a Zotac GeForce GTX 1660 Super Amp Edition. And for good measure, we're gonna throw in a couple 1070s to see how the board responds. Without further ado, let's get to building. All right, so we've got everything mounted to the rig frame. We've got the 1200 watt PSU in, we've got the motherboard mounted, we've got ethernet, we've got HDMI video out, we've got our processor mounted, and we've got our memory on. And everything's connected to the motherboard. We've got our four pin Molex connected. And it's worth calling out that this motherboard uses a four pin CPU socket instead of the, I don't know, kind of standard eight pin that you see these days. I'm using my AAA wave switch to power on and off. So now we've got to try that critical first power on self test and see if this will post. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. All right. I don't know what's up. Let me check everything out. Okay guys, I'm getting a bit concerned here. Let me tell you what I've got going on. I made sure I checked all of the connections. I reseated the RAM. I reseated the power connections. I checked the power switch. I checked the power at the wall. I checked everything. And the best I can do is get the processor fan to spin and then it stops. Coincidentally, two days ago, I found this bronze power supply online for about $60. And this is a semi-modular power supply. These I like to get these because, I mean, you're going to power the processor, you're gonna power the motherboard anyway, so I don't mind the semi-modular nature. And it's an 80 plus bronze power supply. So in any future rig builds I have, I can use the power supply to power the motherboard and the processor, the RAM, all the basics and get it up and running and then I can use my server power supplies to power all the heavy load stuff. And this is my last ditch effort. So I pulled this power supply out and I put in the bronze. I've reconnected everything. I have not powered it on yet. And this is it. If this doesn't work, I think something's wrong with the Zotac motherboard. If it does work, then that means this P2 1200 watt power supply that I have has something wrong with it. And guess which one this is. If you watch the EVGA RMA video, but this was the refurbished power supply that I got back. This is that same power supply. And if you recall in that video, I tested this, and that's where I'm a little bit confused. I don't think this could be the problem, but I did use a different power supply's cables. So I'm really worried that something's wrong with this 1200 watt P2. If this works, then I suspect actually what is wrong is maybe the cable because I did not use these cables in that video. So I won't go on too much longer about that. This is my last ditch effort. And assuming I've got everything else connected right, I mean, I've gone over it about five times now. This is it. So 
we're going to try to power it on and fingers crossed this works power switch yes okay everything looks good here we go fans are spinning now I got a beat yes Woo! <laughs> oh yes that just made my day okay <laughs> all right so the Zotac board's fine and the power supply is working now that means we've got an issue with our P2 I'll cover that some other time I've got to figure out what's going on there fingers crossed it's just it's just the cables so I'll troubleshoot that later on but so this is working let me get into the BIOS and I'll be right back guys all right we are in the BIOS here for the first time and core version 5.12 Per Zotac, we're not expecting any updates here, so that is what it is, I think. You can see it's recognizing the 3900 at 2.8 gigahertz. It's seeing our memory. Okay, let's check out and see what other features this has. Okay, right here with primary display, I'm gonna leave this set to auto because sometimes you get in these Linux-based distributions, they want you to turn the primary or the onboard off, but sometimes the board can detect whether it's got something connected to it and go ahead and power that port down on its own so that it won't show up in Hive or NiceHash OS or anything like that. So I'm gonna leave this as auto for now. Internal graphics, we'll leave that to auto. Peg port configuration. Now max link speed. I'm gonna try it on auto. We'll see how that does. If that doesn't work, We'll come in here, try Gen 2, then we'll try Gen 1, but we'll leave it at auto for now. Minor mode, it's enabled. So it looks like you can set the speed on each individual slot. All right, I'll step through these menus just so you can get a sense of what's in the BIOS. Let's change the setup prompt timeout. Let's change that. Okay, so right here is the AC power loss. It's set to power off. Because I'm using this in the studio right now, I'm gonna leave this in the power off state, but if you're gonna do some sort of automation or you wanna remotely control your rig, you can set this to power on and then plug your power cable into something like a Tekken Wi-Fi switch. When you cut the power, then cut it back on. You don't have to worry about flipping any switches because this will come back on right here. All right, so I'm gonna leave that off for now. Okay, I think everything looks good to this point, so we're gonna get our Zotac 1660 Super, and that'll be our first test. And I don't have room, because of the way this frame is built, to actually set it on the motherboard, which would probably be the best first test here. So I'm gonna to have to get a riser, put that up here, and get it mounted to the top. We're gonna to set up the Super first, and if that works well, we're just gonna add a couple more GPUs and see how the board holds up. All right, let me get this set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've booted up and we are into Hive for the first time here. And everything looks good so far. We've got our command prompt, so we are going to check out the miner. Look at that. <laughs> awesome, check that out. All right, so without any real BIOS modifications or anything, the 1660 Super right out of the gate is working just fine. We left those settings on auto instead of changing it to Gen 2 or Gen 1, and it's working great. Look at this, we are up and mining right here. 26.52 mega hash, and that's without any overclocks or optimization, so just fresh up and running. The most important thing is that it's working, which is fantastic. I'm liking this board more and more by the moment here. Very cool, awesome, okay. I did not expect that. I honestly thought I was gonna have to go back into the BIOS and fool around a little bit. And I was just checking at the wall, we're at 120 watts, which is pretty high for this GPU right here. And it's because it's not optimized. So if you take 20 to 25 off for the uh, motherboard, that means this is running 90, 95 watts, something like that. Um, but you know what? Uh, I'm going to add another card here. I'm going to add another 1070 to one of these ports. And let's let's see what it does with a 10 series. And let's load up a couple more GPUs just to make sure that multiple ports um, are up and working and we're not having any problems. All right, hey guys, just check this out real quick. I was pulling up Hive on my phone 
and uh, I did notice that the motherboard graphics are showing up here and that is of course because we've got the HDMI plugged in so that we can manage things locally here just while we're getting getting it up and running so be sure that once you get this thing set up the way you want if you're running Hive or Nice Ash OS or another Linux based OS that you disable that uh, video out connection in the BIOS or at minimum leave it at auto and it should auto switch back and forth but we'll check that when we unplug everything here and uh, that should go away now I'm just gonna set some real basic overclocks yeah you can see Hive's reporting that this 1660 supers at 112 watts so I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit here Let's set the power limit we'll set it on this amp edition we're gonna set it to 80 watts and the memory clock let's go to 1800 and the core clock we'll leave that at zero yep okay you can see our overclocks are being applied here we're at 27 29 mega hash 30, 30.5 mega hash per second on this 1660 Super Amp Edition. That is awesome. And let me check at the wall. We've got the motherboard plugged in here, the ATX power supply. And you can see it's reporting 16.8 watts. So pretty low, pretty low guys. And then overall on the system here, we're at 108 watts. Okay guys, the 1070 is installed and you can see right here, it's showing up. In Hive, now let's just check the mire real quick and see how we're looking. Okay, not bad. Look at that. Alright, both are mining. The Super's at 31, the 1070's at 26.7. And uh, we're not going to play around optimizing, that's not what this video is about. We're going to add another 1070 here, just to push this board a little bit. Hey, one thing I do want to mention that I didn't call out before, and it occurred to me as I was putting on multiple video cards, but look at the spacing between each of the slots on the board here. And we've got capacitors in there as well. Yeah, so we've got the spacing unlike the ASRock H110 Pro BTC Plus where you've got to wrap the risers so you don't have to worry about that on here. So again, guys, um, I, I'm liking this board. It's, uh, it's turning out to be really nice. This might be my primary test rig from now on. Okay, I'm going to get this 1070 added. We'll add the third one. Okay guys, all three GPUs are up and it is looking solid right here. If you see, we're at 30.6 mega hash on the 1660 Super, 26, basically 26 mega hash per second on both of the 1070s. So that gives us a total of about, what is that, 80, just over 83 mega hash per second on the whole rig. And I'm going to show you, it looks like at the wall we're at 300 watts. And if you divide 83 by 300, that gets you somewhere around 0 0.27 mega hash per watt, which is really solid, especially including these 1070s. It's much better than that with the 1660 Supers, but these 1070s, that's pretty good. I would consider this success. I will run this board for as long as I can. I'm going to go probably put it out in the mining cave and let it run in some heat, let it run for several days. But at this point, from what I've tested so far, just talking about out of the box, getting it up and running, knowing what the price point is, I would absolutely recommend this. I've actually had a couple viewers already message me and tell me that they've been running these for a couple weeks now. And some folks have picked them up since we did the last video. And they have had great reports. I mean, everyone is saying that it's running really good. So, I mean, again, for how difficult it is to get parts these days, I would pick this up while you can because as we said in our unboxing video, it is while supplies last. They are not going to make any more of these. And uh, that's unfortunate. I kind of wish they would because I'm pretty impressed. I really, I really like this. All right, we'll wrap there for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.